Hey, what's up? Saren Darko here with Mr. Dominic Rapson. And we're just going to have a real candid conversation about the myths in the fitness industry and the health industry, right? So we're going to talk about saturated fat, cholesterol, and we're going to talk about Dominic's experiences being a vegan for two years, okay? Now, I was a vegan for a month last year, but Dominic was a vegan for two years, and he's worked with lots of ex-vegans and helping them become healthier. Now, before you think about, oh, well, they're going to talk about veganism and all this stuff, we're going to have an objective <laughs> conversation and Dominic's research both sides of the equation and so have I but he has more experience when it comes to you know what the truth is about nutrition and experience with all these people that have become malnourished on uh, what we'd say not the appropriate diet for our species right yeah, not so species appropriate diet. exactly so yeah Dominic's a nutritionist by the way if you didn't know and uh, obviously I'm a health coach focusing more on the mental aspects like emotional eating, psychology, habits, all that kind of stuff. So it's really interesting little collaboration we've got going on here. We're gonna sure. dive really deep into the myths on saturated fat cholesterol. So let's get into it. So first of all, Dominic, welcome. Respect, brother. Yeah, man. So it's funny having time with you as yeah. well. So we, we met like a, a year ago, I think, right? Here in yeah, Bali. Yeah, a year exactly here in Bali in yeah. September. Yeah. And, then, and then I, I um, kept in contact with him and then in England, I met, went down to where you live and I met up with you. Yeah, you're like a next door neighbor in Kent, right? Yeah, yeah, that was great, yeah. And then basically from there, I started changing my diet. My diet was already pretty good, but then I didn't realize there was a next level. Yeah, you were already a shredded beast. Yeah, I was already ripped, I was already shredded, you know, but there's always a next level, that's the thing. And that's what I want to educate you guys on. It's like, no matter how good you think it is, it's always good, there's always better. And it's just like that constant pursuit of never, never settling and just constantly trying to optimize your health, you know? Yeah. And so you've helped me with that. And um, yeah, it's just really nice to be able to do this video for you and talk about more of your experience. So. For sure, man. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've been planning this video for <laughs> yeah, ages. Yeah, man. This guy's so busy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about what are the main myths in, in the fitness industry, in the health industry. So let's start with saturated fat. Yeah. So. Why, why is fat so demonized in, in the world? Like, why is everyone pushing this low fat agenda? Yeah, so I mean, there's been a lot of psychological warfare on us to do well revolved around fat. And I mean, we can get a lot deeper on this into the corporate side of how this came around, why these ideas were pushed, um, what agendas were bought for this kind of manipulation that we see. But um, that's something really deep to look into. I mean, this started around the 40s into the 60s heavily and has now just kind of become the norm. Mm. But um, we have to relate this first to, before we get into the biochemical science, let's talk about longevity in centenarians and in tribes. And we see that those with the high levels of cholesterol actually have better longevity. They live longer and they live healthier. We also see correlation that the higher your cholesterol, the less risk of disease you have. And most people will be like, no, I've seen studies and this and that about that. But what they don't pay attention to is what is the vested interest behind this science? Is it epidemiological, as we like to joke around, epidemiology? And what are the controls and methods behind these studies that are trying to use correlation rather than causation? Mm. And um, so I like to put out that everywhere you go in the world, those with the highest percentage of elderly, they're all on actual meat diets, they have a lot of fish and red meat in their diet. Yes, they may be intaking other things, other vegetation, fruits, coffee, wine and such, but there is a huge presence of saturated animal fat in their diet, which gives them the most abundant amount of cholesterol in their body. And we see, and this is a study that has been done all over, not the cherry pick science, which has gone in isolated little towns to fit their agenda, but just in general populations spread across the world, we see that the elders that have reached centenarian status, which is 100 years or more, all have had a high dose of cholesterol in their body. It is the makeup of every cell and precursor to your hormones. So why is it that you would think that something that makes up a vast majority of your tissues, the intracellular activity, which we'll go deeper into in a minute, but the intracellular activity that cholesterol causes is the necessity for every living organism. Even ruminants and apes and such, they're on high cholesterol. They just have a different digestive system. It's a fermentative system that allows them to extract saturated fat from the starches of the vegetation they eat. Mm, right, so, so we have, I mean, you and I obviously understand we need saturated fat, but to the, to the, 
most people out there, I mean, if you just look at all the marketing, yeah. everyone's pushing this agenda of low fat. Like, and we know that Ansel Keys was one of the, you know, one of the, yeah. uh, what's it called? He started this whole low fat movement, right? Yeah. Well, not only him, but there's um, a few like the Adventist Church mm -hmm. setting up a few organizations in America for the Heart Association and a right. lot of the food regulation processes. And that's all on another topic, but they were trying to bring down the cholesterol in men in order to deactivate their sexual energy as cholesterol is a huge precursor to testosterone. And it's also a precursor to the most female hormones as well that activate um, sexuality, which is the most abundant energy in the body yep. and also the reproductive system. So it's a, it's a bit of a population uh, kind of agenda there. Yeah. So let's talk about, so we need cholesterol, right? That's, yeah. that's a fact. It's a fact. And that's why that the body um, in the liver can recycle certain amounts of cholesterol because it's that important. But is recycling cholesterol enough to thrive? That's mm. a whole different topic. Yeah. But the body knows it's that important that it has actual biochemical roles in play to help you at least upkeep a little bit of cholesterol for your tissues. Mm. But um, you know, there's lots of people that go to their doctor, for example, mm -hmm. and their doctor's like, "Oh, your your LDL is too high." Yeah. Like, and they. The statin drugs industry is like a billion dollar industry. Like yeah. I was researching this and I was yeah. like, holy crap. It's huge. Like I knew it's it was bad, push. but like there's drugs being, okay, so if you don't know what statin drugs are, basically it's, it's a drug, right, where it basically yeah, designed it, to lower your cholesterol. It dampens the amount of cholesterol and uh, dampens the regulation of cholesterol. And they're actually starting to recall it because there's too much evidence now that even those on statins are having pulmonary issues yep. that we find now correlated and this is clinical this isn't epidemiology epidemiology by the way i just have to say this mm -hmm. now is a survey that initiates the funding for a clinical trial it is not a study or a conclusion itself but we're seeing from clinical trials that even those on statins are still suffering stroke and heart attacks because they don't have the necessary cholesterol to protect them from that as you said they think, oh, you have too much bad cholesterol. To me, and in an ancestral view of how tribes and many people operate, there's no such thing as bad cholesterol. There's excellent cholesterol, and then there's just good cholesterol. Mm. That excellent cholesterol is the intracellular activity that drives the nutrients of which you eat and the nutrients that go into your blood from the digestive process into your cells, into your organs, into your tissues and mitochondria. Then the good cholesterol comes in and you have high density and low density lipoproteins. The high density then has to scrub away the work of the, lipo, the low density lipoprotein, which has pulled in the nutrients. Then there's an exchange of waste. The high density has to come and remove that and allow your body to detoxify and remove the waste. So cholesterol is a huge factor in many of the biochemical systems that happen every second of, the, of your living day. Mm, absolutely. So let's put that to bed. So, so, okay, so what do you tell people who Go to the doctor and the doctor mm. says, you got low cholesterol, you need to take this statin drug. Right. What, what do you tell those people? Because obviously we're not doctors. Yeah. So in those instances, there's a few defining factors of calcium um, artery score and also free-flowing triglycerides. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have high cholesterol, but you don't have a huge abundance of free-flowing triglycerides and inflammation markers and cortisol markers, then you are not at risk. But generally most people nowadays, um, which is what they use epidemiology for and try and like, use it against meat eaters. When they call us meat eaters, they're talking to people who are generally mixing meat with all kinds of things, whether that be soda, whether that be um, starches, um, sweets, desserts, things that are really processed or things very high in sugar. The mix of sugar and fat is diabolical and it's something that um, is very addictive. So if you're eating those foods and you're consuming so much sugar and you have high inflammation markers, then what I would tell you is not to worry about your cholesterol, but to worry about your food decisions, trying to minimize those inflammatory foods, which we know is sugar, which we know is processed chemicals, and trying to increase your intake of the good cholesterols, which are coming from the saturated animal fats, because those cholesterols you're receiving come with the fat-soluble nutrients that the animal has fermented for you. Mm, yeah. So, you know, in that sense, I would say, you know, if you're eating really healthily and you're eating lots of saturated fat, whether you're mixing with a few vegetables here and there, but you're not intaking any of the other crap, high cholesterol, as I said, is a marker for longevity and good health and allows you as a human animal to retain a lean body and higher amounts of muscle mass, which makes you more metabolically flexible 
and having more muscle mass like this guy as well. <laughs> like this guy. <laughs> well, both of us. I mean, you know, I'm training hard every day. I yeah, know yeah, you, you train spend day, about yeah. your training. You're still yeah. maintaining this muscle mass. It's quite easy for the body to maintain muscle mass even if you're not training. And I've seen this in elder clients who have kids and they don't mm. train at all and they still build muscle. Why is that muscle being built and why is the body holding into such lean tissue which is flexible and detoxifies the body quicker? Because of cholesterol. Mm. Yeah, and that, that's something I re really noticed because, I mean, I was injured for like a year and then at the time of recording this, it's what, nine months into the year? At the start of the year, I started eating lots of red meat like every single day, right? Yeah. Until basically now. And I remember I was at a steakhouse and then I posted on my story and then you like screenshotted it and sent it to me back and you were like, oh shit, you're actually building muscle. I was like, what? Yeah. But for How you, it looks like I was building muscle and I, I felt strong. And I didn't really realize why it was happening. And then you explained, like, because of the cholesterol, the increase in cholesterol is building your muscle tissue. Yeah, you're driving more of the nutrients into your muscles, as I said. So really, I tell people to look up HDL, LDL, and what triglycerides, and look up what they mean, and look up their biochemical function. Stop looking for just the proof in what some scientists want to isolate, because that can go in so many ways. And if somebody has a biased agenda, and they're not looking for an ultimatum, they're just looking for a certain thing that fits what they want to explain, which is what I try and avoid as much as possible, which is why I've journeyed through being vegan and so many different diets to understand how they physiologically affect me and biochemistry-wise, how they're operating in the body, mm. which is something we'll get into deep. But research the individual biochemical reactions that occur in your body from these molecules, and then you will start to understand what role they really play, and then you'll start to understand what affects them. Yeah. So every study that tries to use cholesterol as a negative has been funded or has been looked at by a group or organization that is trying to disprove the bad or ill effects of sugar and the inflammatory markers in the products that they choose to sell. Mm. So cholesterol, because the common misbelief, misconception is cholesterol causes heart disease. Yeah. That's what people believe. They're like, oh, if I have too much bacon and eggs and red meat, then I'm going to have heart disease. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's false, right? It's false, I mean, because you, you have to look at causation, not correlation. Yes. If you're looking at just correlation, but you're not really isolating or using controls, there's too many variables for you to identify. That's why we have people that are just eating eggs, bacon, steak, and living magnificently well and slowing down the aging clock and no heart disease. But then again, you're seeing people on omnivorous diets and you're seeing people on um, vegan and vegetarian diets still suffering from stroke, heart disease and heart attacks. So does that mean that the low cholesterol is affecting this or that low, cho low cholesterol is irrelevant? No, there's definitely a causation there. You're lowering the cholesterol, which we know biochemically is vital for the body and you're seeing all of these diseases. Then you look at cholesterol in a high amount with these foods that are not natural to the human body and you're seeing an issue as well. And then you're seeing people eat a huge abundance of cholesterol without interfering with inflammatory foods and you're seeing a positive outcome. You need to start looking into these and that's where you find the truth. Mm. Right, so, okay, let's talk about more about the veganism aspect of it. So right. you were a vegan for two years yeah. in your early 20s. Yeah. And how, how did you start becoming a vegan? Like what caused you to become a vegan? And right. just talk about your experience whilst you were a vegan. And then we'll go into more stuff after. Interesting, yeah. So it was a very interesting journey. Like, so a lot of people that I've come across, I've worked with many ex-vegans and being vegan myself, it's all to do with psychology. We get put into this psychology and it's almost like religion to think that we are becoming better people, to think that, you know, they use climate as well. They bring people into this climate religion where they think they're standing up for the earth and things like that. That's a whole other topic on how we work with agriculture and how we work with carbon sequestration and biodiversity. But it's all psychological. I mean, it hit me psychological. I thought that I didn't want to cause harm. I thought it was the right way. And this was before I understood or looked into biochemical science and understood the human body as an animal. You know, we do have a role in nature and we do have a role as an animal, you know. We, we eat life to produce life and our brain is 25% larger, well, because of cholesterol and saturated fat, right. but it's 25% larger with a higher consciousness because we are not equal 
to animals. We do have a specific role as this intelligent being and there's a reason why we're at the top of the food chain and why we place so much as control and stuff into nature. But before I knew all of this, it was just the idea that I was going to transcend, which um, comes from a ascetic view. And these are views that actually come from the East and it comes from Hinduism and a lot of spiritual philosophy from the East that has kind of snuck its way into the Western world and people are starting to adopt. And um, the ascetics, they, they were completely opposite to tantrics. And what their view was is that the world had too much suffering and that to live was a suffering existence. So they wanted to transcend, they wanted to spiritually evolve and leave this realm in order to escape this suffering. And that's where many of the vegan ideas without many people knowing actually come from. Mm -hmm. And it's to not cause harm, it's to not indulge, it's to not sustain yourself. So is that what you wanted to do, not and cause harm? I, I wanted to not vegan? cause harm and I wanted to transcend, transcend um, spiritually, I wanted to be more of a, a spiritual being, but we're in this realm as physical creatures and we have to play our role as physical creatures. We have this consciousness to make incredible decisions and to really play with our environment, but we are here to live certain existences that play vital lessons in our life, right? Mm -hmm. I was trying to escape that and um, it's what many people fall into and within that time, my physical body started to show obvious signs of deterioration. Obviously my cholesterol was low, my digestion was falling apart, uh, my sex drive was going down, energy was going down, and these are typical things that most people experience, but they don't blame it on the diet, or they don't think that it's something abnormal. They're just like, oh, well, it's normal. Doing veganism wrong. Doing all, oh, you're doing That's veganism what wrong. some vegans. Yeah, it's, um, and you know, but then people now that they're starting to see the shortcomings physically and they're starting to see that people are getting autoimmune diseases, they're starting to deteriorate. It's no longer about health now. Now it's apparently, oh, well, it's just for the animals. Right. But you are an animal that is able to affect so much positivity. But if you let yourself decay, all of your life purpose, all of your mental capacity will diminish. And mental illness is a huge factor that comes in with veganism because the brain is predominantly made of cholesterol and DHA, that cosohexanoic acid. Which you're not getting from a vegan which diet. Which you're not getting from a vegan diet. And any way that you can assimilate some of the stuff from raw vegetables or cooked vegetables, nuts, legumes, whatever you name it, is not enough to sustain the powerful output that your brain has. So you start to disrupt the pathways of the brain, the nervous system, you start to get a permeable gut, which then disrupts even more signals and creates an inflammation marker you start to fall into mental illness and people that are five, 10 years plus start to notice that their anxiety is higher, their depression is higher, their logical and critical thinking has diminished, they have brain fog. So what positivity are you affecting in the world and how are you transcending spiritually apart from your own ego, egotistical thoughts on being a better person? So it's, right. do you see the mess? I mean, yeah. I could go on, yeah, but yeah. So why this is you, what I fell into. Absolutely. So what caused you to stop being a vegan? Well, my body started to deteriorate even quicker and my mental state started to deteriorate. I was no longer this logical, clear thinking, masculine force. I was being emasculated, my sex drive was down, I was stopped building muscle, I started losing muscle, I started getting watery and fat and I was no longer able to maintain my strength and my energy levels unless I ate. I had to eat for energy all the time. I had to eat for a positive mood, which many don't notice. and. It took me thinking, you know, something is wrong, but I already built up such a bad psychological idea around eating red meat that it took me going back to spearfishing and being in the ocean and seeing the cycle alive and also feeling that I'm not only a predator, but I am prey and that there is no fairness and there is no normality and there is no advantage. The only advantage I have as an animal is having a bigger brain and better critical thinking and this higher consciousness, which I have to use as a tool to navigate nature. Right. That's my, our tool. We don't have armored skin, we don't have claws, right. but we have an incredibly powerful brain that allows us to outsmart the other animals. While other animals, like when I was hunting, sharks were trying to get me, sharks were trying to get my food, eels were trying to bite me, nothing gave a fuck about me. Excuse my French there, but right. nothing out there cared about me. Yep. You know, there was no sentient connection or anything. They are sentient beings. But they're just fulfilling their role and they have no 
conscious blockages or thoughts about fulfilling their role as a predator or prey. They're just going about living their day presently. And when I was observing that, and when I was taking the life myself, and I was like feeling the energy, and I was like, wow, this has, you know, fulfilled such a role in nature, and now it's coming time and place to fulfill its role, which to me is an even bigger role of sustaining my life to then go and do even more positive within my species is when I started to go, right, you know, this is just the way life is, you know. To not cause harm means to only cause harm to yourself. Mm. And if you're causing harm to yourself, what is the point? Speciesism is an appropriate way of living because you have to try and sustain your own species. Every creature out there only cares about its own species and repopulating its own species and fulfilling its role and fulfilling its role is it being selfish. A cow doesn't care about the grass and the insects or anything else. All these animals don't care about its prey in that sense. They just act out what nature has embedded them to do. But people want to go against that. They want to go against anti-nature. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about that. So we talked about, you know, why you went vegan, why you stopped being vegan, and then your transition into the diet that you have now, which we can talk about later. But yeah. I want to talk more about why the propaganda is so strong for veganism. Like, I mean, for me personally, so you want to get deep. Like, now. <laughs> I'm I'm objective about this. Like, I just want to know what is the best nutrition that a human beings should be eating. Right, that's my whole obsession. And so, like, you're obviously of the same opinion. Like, you just want to know what is the food that's going to help me thrive for the longest yeah, period of time. Yeah, I'm always searching for what makes the most biochemical sense, yeah. evolutionary, anthropology-wise. And uh, what seems to show the quickest reversal of modern disease that's not been around long and also what's keeping us living the longest in out of the people that are removed from uh, unspecies appropriate diet. Mm. So, I mean, the vegan industry, like we've seen, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger jumped on a bandwagon now. Like, yeah. We've seen all this propaganda, all this marketing funding and an idea essentially, which I mean, based off our, top, our conversation is essentially not the truth right yeah. like, so why why are all these people pushing this agenda of eating less meat yeah I mean in the general people that are like puppets of the corporates in terms of like influence and stuff they're just actually general clueless they're just following the advice of people that are biased towards the science using epidemiology um, cherry-picking like the China study which is, we all know has been debunked we understand the methods that they use and it was obviously a huge agenda. Well, that's actually interesting because I read the China study and I was like... I read it as well. I was, I was like, like, oh, Whoa, shit. This is some <laughs> serious data. And then you realize how they collected the data and you're like, ah, oh, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, you just realize, okay, I see what's going on here. Well, yeah, there's a huge agenda because the more you break down family farms and the more you make a fake crisis of climate and you unite people under that and you blame it on the family farms, you blame it on the meat, like how they're doing with the Amazon rainforest and they don't even know how much Liberium is being actually um, mined out of Brazil and what those fires are actually about and how much of those fires are actually natural as well. All of these things are being manipulated and thrown in the face and they're trying to hit us emotionally because they know new age spirituality and the modern people <coughs> of today are highly emotional and highly emotional reactive. So they get us emotionally and what they're trying to do is the more they can warp our idea of being an animal and being within nature and removing us from nature, the more they can take control of our food and the more they can process our food for us and create a dependency on them which not only feeds them financially, but then gives them control over the status of our health. Partner hand in hand with that goes the pharmaceutical industry, which then gets the, the remaining parts of us and feeds them into more financial greed and uh, keeps us in a loop of uh, misery and suffering. Mm. So it, it's pretty deep, but um, all of these people pushing this, I mean, if you look at Game Changers, uh, that new documentary as yes. well, it's funny that a lot of the vegans don't address the fact that all of those athletes since being vegan have not accomplished anything new or done anything. They have not set any <laughs> records. Right. One of the guys in it actually has no official records. He just has some like hometown backyard records which they're pushing it and nobody's looking deeper into it. But when you look him up and you look at everything, you realize it's not an official title. You then even realize that the numbers some of those athletes are getting doesn't even qualify them to the world tour of professional athletes in that field that are doing the actual championships. 
their numbers aren't high enough. You then look at most of those athletes as well in those uh, in that game changer athlete. A lot of them built their bodies and got their records during consumption of some kind of animal product. Even those that say they never ate meat, like that um, really famous bodybuilder that everyone quotes at me. Nima, 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 Delgado. Nima Delgado, yeah. He was actually taking whey protein, eating eggs and eating dairy for many, many years. And he's only been vegan the past few years. I think it's like a total of four years now, mm. but people say he's been vegan all his life without actually looking into the truth. And does he display that truth openly as well? Mm. No, because it's not profitable as well. And it's trying to lead you and, as and an you, you were talking to me about something that I didn't never knew about, which is when you're like when you switch to vegan after being a meat eater for most of your life, you have marrow stores built up. Yes, that's a great So can topic. you explain can you explain that to people? So basically even if you're an omnivore, so I'll i I'll say something quickly. As an omnivore, I mean if you're eating meat, most of these people are smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol and such, but they're still getting some of the benefits of meat. So all of the nutrition that is fat soluble and directly assimilated by the body in the duodenum and the small intestine that's perfectly designed for this is then stored into your bone marrow first before it's stored into your other tissues. Now when you go vegan, and this is why some can last 10-15 years before they break down, we found it's directly correlated with the amount of nutrition stored in their marrow which starts to empty over many many years and that's how we see a lot of the vegan doctors who are in their 40s and 50s they don't tell you this but they've been found <laughs> because we found their doctors reports that they've fallen over and broken hips fallen over and fractured bones so easily on something that at that age should not be happening and they don't display this on the social media or talk about it but if you look into the reports which are given out freely which is crazy that america actually does that you can see the injuries they had um, I can't remember his name exactly, but he slipped over and broke a hip and he was only 40 something years old. Yeah. There's so many of these bone fractures and a lot of vegan athletes as well. They don't say it, the lack of energy, the amount of supplements they have to take to upkeep their energy, yeah. to upkeep their muscle. And like Nemo Delgado as well, he doesn't step on stage anymore because he's nowhere near the size of continuing building the muscle that he needs in order to compete. Yeah. And their bones are weak, their marrows are emptying. It's it's devastating and they're, they're stuck in a, what I would have to openly say as a delusion that the human body with a 1.5 pH stomach and a 63% smaller, um, yeah, shorter, sorry, small intestine is designed to take such abuse from anti-nutrients mm -hmm. and fiber. Yeah. I have to say this because before I met you, I, I'd watched Cowspiracy documentary on Netflix. Yeah, what we've the watched hell? all of them. And I'd seen all these documentaries. I had to watch them to see what was going on. Yeah. yeah and, and I actually then, watched them around the time I was vegan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And even then I was like, mm, this doesn't quite seem accurate. And there was something about it. Yeah. I didn't really trust um, much of the things I was reading even while I was vegan. I was just vegan because I was feeling it out and I also spent time with our Rastafarians who were in the springs doing vegan food as well and yeah. I never really trusted the science right it didn't make sense ever. yeah exactly but the but even though it didn't make sense like we didn't there was no there was no other proof it was like hmm that doesn't quite make sense but okay I'm gonna have to believe it because there's so many people talking about this yeah it was like, hard to I mean Bill Gates is on the bandwagon now you know yeah like, it's and like, why is he on the bandwagon because he has huge ties of money in the climate realm yep. but anyway yeah <laughs> so and then i i went to buy this book called how not to die and it's funny because after i started following you there was a guy who said he crossed out the two and he was like how to die oh yeah <laughs> and then i saw the author and i saw his like what he looked like and i was like wait i'm reading a book from a guy that looks like that like he's aging rapidly rapidly yeah. and I'm, i was thinking like because i was testing it on my own body like eating a lot of fiber by the way of fruits and you know a lot of lot of carbs and yeah, you know all that it. stuff and i was going to the toilet three times a day which is not but, normal but i didn't <laughs> know it was normal, normal. I, I thought that was healthy yeah because you're detoxifying to all these other people. you're right. clearing waste like, why are you creating so much waste you know so like the, the whole fiber issue is just like massive because yeah. i mean i was in the i mean there's so many people i can speak for a lot of people in the fitness industry because i was that guy yeah. who was eating all the veggies eating a salad a day like me and mike were still we'd like we'd, we'd make it a fucking compulsory thing to have a salad a day right and I have that idea as well when i was bodybuilding back yeah. long back in the day thinking yeah. we we're being healthy and then i met you and then you're like 
Dude, the crap out. It's just flowing all. It's just flowing through you. Like you're not yeah. absorbing any of you that. Can't assimilate any of it. Yeah. And it's actually blocking certain nutrients from it's, being absorbed as actually, well. Actually, yeah. This is the thing. Like when you eat grains or legumes or certain vegetables with meat, there's a sixty to eighty percent reduction in the assimilation of the meat's nutrients because these vegetables that do not exist in nature, that are only maybe 14,000 years old, that were made during the Agrarian Revolution, that were hybridized from a mustard plant, has not been around in our evolution long. So these uh, lectins, oxalates, phytates, they leach minerals and vitamins from us or whatever we've eaten along with it in order for the body to get rid of it. And it's like what you were saying as well, it's a great point with the doctors. You look at vegan doctors or vegan advocates they are aging extremely fast. You can see it in their face, they're lacking the collagen and cholesterol. They do not look well. Their teeth also aren't doing too well. You look at uh, McGregor, who says, Dr. McGregor, who says um, you should have four to six watery shits is healthy. That is not healthy. Well, why is it not healthy? Let's, let's talk about that. Okay, so if your body is excreting that amount of waste, you are not absorbing fiber, soluble or insoluble, you cannot fully absorb that you only have a two percent capacity in your intestines to sat to take saturated fats from that the rest is just scraping along the walls of your intestine creating gut permeability creating gut dysbiosis and inflaming the lines and creating a histamine and autoimmune reaction which is why 90 percent of the vegans that have come to work with me most of the autoimmune issues were all gut related all of them all nine, uh, sorry, I mean 90% of them. The other 10% had much deeper issues that stem from the stomach as well and might have chondral issues, but it's generally the 90% all messed up guts. The other ones might have chondral and metabolic dysregulation, which is even harder to and even longer to resolve mm. if already not too far. Yeah, yeah. But then you look at like other guys like David Avocado Wolf. Yep. Like the guy is fat and he's terribly inflamed in the face and he's aging really badly you look at the other guy the um the african guy the the black doctor he's huge he's he's massive he's bald i forgot name? his name oh. he's not he's not that important for me to remember <laughs> but I, I don't even know if he's around still but he's huge and he's talking about protein and performance so if you can't wear it as my mentor paul check back in the day would have said don't share it we're here and sitting here topless, not because we're trying to get you to be like, oh wow, I envy their bodies, oh wow, I just how I want to look, oh I trust them because they look that way. It's not just that, we're showing you that we walk a certain path that allows, and this is every human animal. I also try to look at um, biochemical individuality, but it's pseudoscience. Mm. Every human animal is designed to be at lean musculature. I'm not saying you have to be huge like a bodybuilder, but you are designed to be an athletic animal to navigate nature and survive. And this is why we're here topless, not only because it's hot here in Bali, and oh, yeah. we are proud of what we have achieved because we work towards it. But even if you don't, having an aesthetic which is lean and of dense mature muscle means you are healthy and you can look at the correlation through studies between muscle mass and longevity they are intertwined the more muscle mass you have the more longevity you have you look at all of the tribes and you look through dr western a price's work you look at all of the tribes across the world those that were meat abundant or meat only specific and based by the coast and had seafood also were the most robust people on this earth they all had natural six packs. They all had built chest, shoulders, arms, and legs. They may not have been huge because they did not have the modern abundance we have from supermarkets, agriculture, and the farming we do, but they all maintain a lean aesthetic that was fit to navigate and cross nature and survive against nature's other species that hunted us. Exactly, and you know, that's, I mean, everything he's saying is echoing my thoughts because as, as you can see, like, I mean, obviously he's got more muscle, but we're both lean guys, right? And this is because of the way we eat, like, and the it's diet. Effortless. Exactly. We don't, we don't do that, cardio. Yeah. We don't run for any and on purpose. We yeah. do, we're not in the gym for three or four hours a day. You know, I train an hour, two hours max. Yeah. And my focus is not building muscle. My focus is strength output performance as a calisthenics and explosive tricking. I'm not actually lifting weights or doing anything like that. And yet my body still continues to build muscle and it still continues to upkeep it 
even if I don't train for a month, I still look exactly the same. Mm, yeah. So it's like building that metabolic flexibility that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, and it's understanding also that from the fitness industry, and let's not just talk about veganism, let's talk that even the fitness industry is very destructive to human health. Yes. Trying to base everyone off a system from World War One of these rations and caloric deficits and caloric this. Mm. And we also see that hormonally, metabolically, and biochemically as a whole, that anything outside of a protein does not matter calorie wise. You can't over consume protein. Mm. Your That's body fully utilizes one. it. So <laughs> non non protein calories do not matter. Yeah. If you're eating foods that are only energy, which are non essential, and I ask you now, look up an essential carbohydrate and tell me if you find one. If you do, it'll probably be worth a lot of money. But you won't. There's no essential carbohydrate, therefore energy, food that only results in energy, is not necessary for the body. And if you're only eating energy, you're going to be storing energy. What does storing energy result in? The accumulation of fat. Mm. Which explains why most men these days, I mean, they're just mostly skinny fat, right? Because yeah. they're eating lots of a high carb diet with lots of processed crap in between that. And it's just being stored as visceral fat. Yeah. And just applying pressure on the organs. Mm. You know, I had somebody, um, you know, a lot of these guys, they want to use the paper, the same papers that the vegans use about cholesterol and they say, oh, you have high cholesterol, oh, you're, you're gonna die, oh, you're gonna have problems, you need, you need to have a mixed balance. And then I look at them and I see inflammation and I see watery weight and I see fat stuck on their body and I don't see an output in energy and performance that somebody who's balanced should have. But these people don't realize that that's, that's strange. They don't look at themselves and go, okay, well, this guy is very lean, has a lot of muscle, he eats once, sometimes twice a day, and doesn't need to eat for energy and can go days without eating with the same strength and energy output. That sounds pretty fit to survive nature, doesn't it? Yeah. Are we not meant to be robust animals that survive nature, even though we're surrounded by comfort and technology now? That DNA still has not changed. Mm. Yeah, and no snacking. Yeah, no snacking. Always got time no, for... no protein bars. I no do. I got bowls. shit to do, man. I don't want to have to think about cooking and snacking or taking four shits and spending half of my day <laughs> eating or shitting. <laughs> my day is spent learning, getting information, helping clients, just like you, yeah. perfecting my skills, perfecting my attitude as a growing male force. Yes. I ain't got time to be shitting and eating all day. Yeah, and that brings me nicely. I've got my phone out here because we're going to do another video. So basically, let us know what questions you have from what we've covered in today's video. Yeah, this is pretty much just touching the surface. Yes. We can go so much more in depth, but yeah. we'll be here for three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't think that, oh, but you didn't say this and you didn't do that. It's coming. If you want to know more, let's use critical thinking and not emotion. Politely ask. If you disagree, <laughs> politely disagree and tell us why and we can open dialogue we are here not to say one thing is the truth okay but we're not also here in the yogi way yeah but your truth is your truth no we're here to find out what really works because we want to help people we selfishly want to live long we selfishly want to help ourselves yes. to look and feel good for as long as possible so it's to die young as late as possible yeah, so absolutely. yeah yeah i mean take it away bro. yeah so we got these are all questions that I've researched and been told from people about you know, what I do and stuff like that. So we're gonna cover these in another video, but just to whet your appetite for what's coming. If carbs are bad, why aren't Asians obese? <laughs> just eating meat can't be good. We kind of touched on that today, but we're gonna go deeper in that. Our ancestors didn't live long, so therefore meat is not the answer. Eating too much meat is bad for you. It's acidic. If I eat lots of red meat, that increases my cholesterol because of saturated fat, which increases risk of bile cancer or colon cancer. My doctor says I need to cut down on my red meat. And these are just some of the topics we're gonna to cover, but um, just to whet your appetite on the next video that we're gonna be doing. All right, so um, hope you enjoyed. Comment below. We're gonna be uh, watching the comments like a hawk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're really interested to see where you guys disagree, yeah. where you guys think you wanna go more in depth. And we'll add it onto other videos because as I said, this was an introduction. Um, so f happy we finally made this here. Yeah. And um, we both have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience in this. 
and we want to get down to understand where people feel they may have been manipulated where they think they are confused what's the truth behind certain things and we just want to answer it we don't want to argue and fight or call each other names because we have a different belief none of us are operating emotionally or from belief here we're operating from what makes logical natural and biochemical sense absolutely and with that we'll see you in the next one